so much for being here. As she said, I'm Thea Kelly. I'm a corporate lawyer here in Indianapolis, and I am a longtime supporter of the Indianapolis Library. I'm one of the friends of the library, former board member of the foundation, committee member, and on the advisory board for the African American History Committee. <laughs> Above all that, I have the pleasure and the honor of introducing Kim Fields. I kind of feel like she needs no introduction to who she is. <laughs> Depending on how old you are, you either grew up watching Kim on TV, or you grew up watching Kim grow up on TV. I'm, I, this resume is like three pages long, sorry. <laughs> We know her most fondly from The Facts of Life, and I'm living single as Ray Jean. I'm going to share with you some of her most recent roles and accomplishments that you may not be aware of. Currently, Kim is starring on a hit Netflix comedy series called The Upshaws. She's starring with Wanda Sykes and our very own Michael Epps. And it's a show about trying to make it work with a blended family here in Indiana, which many of us can relate to. I know I can. That show was named one, number one on Netflix, has been recognized by many awards, including the People's Choice and a nomination, or I'm sorry, that was a nomination and an award by the NAACP Image Awards. In 2021, Kim starred in Adventures in Christmasing. It's a romantic adventure starring, uh, I'm sorry, set during the holidays. And she not only starred in the lead role, she also co-created the story served as executive producer on the project, and wrote a song for the soundtrack. And get this, she also performed her own stunt, including zip lining, jumping from a helicopter, that's not right, <laughs> repelling down a mountain, wading through icy waters, and chasing wild animals. You go. <laughs> I also want to add, before I bring her up, that she's launched her signature blends called Signature Blends of KF. It's a full-service distributor of coffee, teas, and coffee dry rubs. It is currently the official coffee of Morehouse, Spelman, Agnes, College, Agnes Scott College, and Microsoft headquarters in Atlanta. You may have seen when you came in that her autobiography is out front for you to purchase. Please do so. Blessed Life. It was published in 2018. And so join me in welcoming Kim Fields. To our stage. Thank you to the library and to the friends of the library for having me. Thank you, thank you. I am so excited to be here. Um, thank you to this wonderful, amazing city. Thank you to all of the wonderful teams that are affiliated with this city who have shown you all what it's like to do big things in the fourth quarter. That's what we're in right now, guys. We're in the fourth quarter. It is the end of the year, right? And it, okay, y'all gonna be quiet now. We done had our little fun. Now we're gonna be quiet and know that we have home training. Know that, we, know that we got manners. So we're in the fourth quarter. We are at the end of the year. We are gearing up for the next year. And the thing that I have found about being in the fourth quarter is that you're either winning or you're not. And if you're not, what you gonna do 
to try to win. And if you're winning, what you going to do to keep winning? So the fourth quarter is such an important time. It's a time to see, what am I doing right? What am I doing that I can keep doing or keep doing and even do better? Or what am I doing that's just not working? What am I doing that I need to readjust and do something different? So that even if I may not win, it's not a total loss. It's not a blowout. And so in the fourth quarter, this is a time to maybe do a little, you know, reflecting. The holidays are coming, the, 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 the end of the year, school break, off from work for a little bit. So everybody talks a, a lot about self-care during this time and doing things for others during this time. I am um, almost two weeks away, actually just under two weeks away from a wellness retreat that I am hosting and curating called Refresh Retreat. And I chose for the theme, I am a gift. Because I honestly feel like sometimes, family, we forget that we're a gift. We forget that we are so special that we are so important, that we matter. And we forget usually to ourselves. And so there's a lack of self-worth and value that we forget to place on ourselves. You are a gift. Now what's the first thing you do with the gift? You say thank you, you give thanks for it, right? When was the last time you gave thanks for yourself? Two, who said that? Who said two days ago? Stand up for me. You gave thanks for yourself a couple of days ago. Good for you. Good for you. Good for you, sweetheart. Good for you. It's important that we realize that we are a gift, and so we want to give thanks. We are here. You above ground, baby. You are here. You're here. You have the gift of life, the gift of sacred breath in your body. That is something to be so thankful for. On top of the fact that you're you. You are you. Even if you were a twin, there ain't another like you. There is nobody like you. You are the most unique gift. There's nobody like you. So we, we say thank you for that gift. We say thank you for that gift. And then what do you do with the gift after that? You open it up. When was the last time that you allowed yourself to be open? All right, yes, all right. Coming out with yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. All right, all right. You're here. You are here. So you came to this event. Y'all were open to coming to this event. This building, not just this room, but this building is full of amazing stories, amazing art that we can open ourselves up to. Amazing authors. Your city is full of amazing experiences. And you have people here dedicated to making sure that you experience them. That is community service. How do I serve this community? You have people, the friends of the library. Who is a friend of a library? Right, them, because they get it and they understand how important it is. The lady told me yesterday, one of the um, creators and curators of this event, she said they've been doing this, uh, was it since the 80s? Yeah, that this event has been going on. That's fantastic. 
That's dedication. You know how long, it, how, how much work it takes to do something for 30, 40 years? It takes a lot of work, a lot of dedication, a lot of passing the baton. Some of the people who started may not be with us either literally or physically. They're dedicated to making sure that you have an open experience here. So remember, you are a gift. You give thanks and stay open. Give yourself permission to dream. Give yourself permission to rise to the occasion if somebody needs you. Give yourself permission to try new things. Give yourself permission to see beyond what the visions are that you may have been given. It's all right. Give yourself permission to be wise. And no, don't share your dream with everybody. Because even though we all, you know, we all cool here and we all kumbaya up in here, everybody is not into your dream. And there are people who are put on your path to be an obstacle. You can't share. My mother told me that long ago. You cannot share your dream with everybody. But do give yourself permission to dream, permission to express yourself. I cannot wait for the poetry. In fact, is it time for me to sit down? Is it? <laughs> Is it poetry time yet? Because <laughs> when I tell y'all, as a fellow spoken word artist, Brother Tony, Brother Tony, Brother, Brother Tony Sticks, where'd he go? Oh, he spoke and left. Okay. <laughs> he said, boop. <laughs> and they go. And they go. <laughs> and they go. I'm mad at you, Tony Sticks. Go ahead on, baby. You got to do. <laughs> but Tony Six was wonderful. Being able to express yourself with photography and painting and music and whatever it is that's in your heart, whatever it is, even you don't have to be great at it. And some of it may not be for anybody but you. I am terrible at painting. But I like to do it every now and then because it's something new and different for me to do. I used to love reading, and I still do. But the thing is, I stopped reading for just as a hobby. It seemed like every time I opened up a book, I kept thinking, how can I make this a movie? <laughs> Who has the rights to this? <laughs> oh, who's playing her? Is there room for me to be in this movie? <laughs> so, so reading became a whole different thing. It's like, oh, that's not a hobby. You know you need a hobby when your 16-year-old son says, Mom, you need a hobby. <laughs> so, right? So I started, I picked up photography again. I, I, and the photographer said, yay. <laughs> so be open. Give yourself permission. As an actor, one of the things, and I, let me back up just a little bit because I, I appreciated all of the um, acknowledgments during my wonderful introduction. Thank you. Uh, but just for kicks and giggles. So I've been acting since I was seven years old. I st <laughs> she said, oh. <laughs> all right, let's do it. Let's do some quizzes right quick. What was the name of my very first commercial? Miss Butterworth. <laughs> Butterworth Syrup, that's right. What was the name, now here go to Die Hard Kim Fields fans. What was the name of my first TV series? <laughs> Say it, baby, I'm, baby, I'm back. Good job, that was the name of my first series. I was eight years old. Fun fact, do you all watch a show called That Girl, Lele? Yeah! 
Yes, indeed. So um, I direct, all right, all right. I direct that show, That Girl Lele. <laughs> now I'm real famous. She ain't cared nothing about me until I said that. Now, oh my God! <laughs> she done sat up in a chair. <laughs> but yes, sweetheart. So I direct the show, That Girl Lele. I'm one of the directors on that show. I will tell Lele that you said hi. The t the, where we filmed That Girl Lele is the studio and the sound stage where I filmed Baby I'm Back. Full circle indeed. Full circle indeed to be on a TV show at eight years old and then to direct other young black girls on their TV show. Won't he do it, won't he do it, won't he do it. <laughs> so after that, I did more commercials. I did uh, some TV movies, and then I did a TV show where I skated around called? Facts of Life. Called? Facts of Life. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So I was on a TV show called Facts of Life from the time I was nine years old until I was 18 years old. So I grew up on television. Very bizarre existence. And my mom never stopped parenting me. And so she didn't become such a fan that she didn't stay my mom. And even though, and especially in the face of her having a dynamic career as an actress. A lot of you know my mother from good times. when she played Janet Jackson's abusive mother. Now listen to me and listen good. She's a great actress. My mother is not an abuser. A to the men. Somebody told me yesterday, I can't iron without thinking about your mama. <laughs> really? <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> so... <laughs> So then I went to college. I went to Pepperdine University. I got a chance to meet Reggie Miller. <laughs> I got a chance to meet some incredible people in my life and my career. So I got my degree from Pepperdine University in three and a half years. I graduated, I double majored. I have a degree in TV and film production and broadcast journalism. <laughs> I gave myself permission to try something new, do something else, see what would happen. So I have a skill set that I don't really use because as a news reporter, I realized quickly during an internship that was not for me. <laughs> because, thank you. <laughs> because I couldn't deliver the news, and especially, you know, the news is supposed to be, for the most part, bad news. So I couldn't deliver the news without having an attitude. <laughs> it was all on my face. Last week, the president said that you can't do the news like that. Go sit down somewhere. <laughs> So, <laughs> but I have that skill set, so now I use that in my conversations on Instagram and YouTube called Refresh by KF, and it's a wellness platform that I have, and so I use those skills that I got, as well as I'm an, uh, an award-winning director and producer uh, and, um, and writer and now stunt person. Uh, the movie that was mentioned, Adventures in Christmasing, by the way, is now available. We just found this out a couple of days ago. It's now available on Paramount Plus. And it's also on Amazon. So it's called Adventures in Christmasing. Okay? Um, and that movie, talk about opening yourself up. That movie and the process of making that movie opened me up. I rappelled down a mountain. <laughs> wow. 
I was in a scene with a wolf. I was in a glacier river, icy cold river waters. I was in, um, we had to take two helicopter rides to get to the remote locations. Um, so there, there's a lot that I was going outside of my comfort zone. And here's what I want to leave you with, family. Naptown, life begins at the end of your comfort zone. Now, don't say, Kim Phil said, no, she didn't. <laughs> that is a quote from Neil Donald Walsh. Life begins at the end of your comfort zone. Life begins at the end of your comfort zone. I told the kids yesterday, if this pool of light right here is your comfort zone, this is what you know, this is, this is where, where everything feels right and comfortable, there's no guesswork, there's no mystery, and right outside there, outside of the pool of light, is the unknown, is, is the areas that you've not explored the areas that you really don't know that much about, an area that you may not be comfortable in. But just see what happens. Maybe put your toe in there. Maybe go a little bit. Nobody said you had to get catapulted into the unknown, uncharted waters. But that was something that I wanted to do in 2016. It was the 40th anniversary of my career in show business. And so I told my team the absolute non-negotiable order of the day, henceforth and forevermore, when it comes to me and my career, is do the unexpected. Go into uncharted waters. If we've done it, we ain't doing it again. I only wanted to do projects that I'd not done before. I only wanted to play characters that I'd not played before. Now, Regina Upshaw is a character in a sitcom, in a multi-camera sitcom. I've done sitcoms. Some people have labeled me the queen of sitcoms because I've been on them since I was seven years old. With two shows alone, I've done 14 years of sitcom acting. Right? Thank you. Amen and amen. So, but the whole thing was, I don't, I'm not checking to do another comedy. I'm not checking to do a sitcom. But they said Mike Epps and Wanda Sykes. Well, now I might have to look at that, because that would be uncharted waters for sure. That was before I even read the script. Then when I read the script and I realized who Regina Upshaw is, I thought I've not played that type of character. And that's why I said yes. But again, uncharted waters. I did Dancing with the Stars. I did a reality series. I did competitive series. I've, I've done a, a British comedy. Again, looking into spaces that would be outside of my comfort zone. And I can't tell you how exciting it is. When you are living outside of your comfort zone, and hear me when I say family, that is not the same thing as living above your means. I'm uncomfortable. I'm out of my comfort zone paying 10 grand a month in rent. That's not what Kim Field said. Don't, don't do that. Don't, don't post me, don't tag me in no selfie in front of a house or in an apartment or a car that's outside of your financial comfort zone because you talking about Kim Field said, be outside my comfort zone. No, not like that. <laughs> You got to have wisdom and discernment in these uncharted waters. But it is the best feeling in the world. So when you watch Adventures in Christmasing, know that I was in a state of euphoria making this movie because I was so far out of my comfort zone. And so was my character. And that was the point of having this type of movie. If you're fans of the wonderful TV series Bel Air, Uncle Phil is the leading man in Adventures in Christmasing. So, life begins at the end of your 
Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And you don't have to make a big deal about it. It doesn't have to be something major. Even little stuff. When you outside that thing, you outside of it. Your whole constitution knows it and feels it. And even if it's just to, oh, yeah, tried that. I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm good. I, paddle boarding. I did paddle boarding. Again, trying new things, coming outside my comfort zone. I'm a kayaker all day, every day. Kayaker. Paddle board. That's the surfboard and you standing up with a broomstick and this kind of... Mm -mm, mm -mm. So they said, no, no, try it. Okay, so I went outside my comfort zone. And I did literally, if this is where you launch, I did like this, went out a little bit, did this. Okay, I'm done. I tried it. <laughs> so it doesn't have to be something that's monumental. It doesn't have to be anything major. I'm looking at this ele elected official, right? Yes. And I'm like... Well, how did this happen? When did you start looking into public service? Because you look so very young. Now, so do I, but that's not the point. <laughs> but there may have been a sense of something that clicks, something that unlocks, that goes, oh, I, I, I think I can do this. Well, I don't know if I can do it, but I'm going to try to do it. And then you try and you're like, oh, I can do it. Oh my goodness, I can get put into uncharted waters and not drown. I can swim, even if it's just to not drown, just to hold myself up until I see a direction. And then I know what directions to go in. Reality TV, one and done. Thank you, put my toe in the water. Uncharted waters, great, I'm good. Did it, didn't drown, thank you, next. So there's all sorts of ways that you can try something new. The movie Ut uh, Zootopia was on TV the other day. And my son, my 10-year-old said, oh gosh, now that song is gonna be stuck in my head. Uh, 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 try everything. And I said, but it's such a great song because really, that's really a great mantra. That's why they made the song. Now you can't try everything and again, you want wisdom with it. You want discernment with that thing. Just don't let fear ever paralyze you. Don't ever let fear win. Don't ever let fear win. Don't let fear win. Keep them spidey senses going. Keep that instinct going. That's, that's the wisdom, that's spidey senses, that's mm, something don't feel right, that's mm, it smells like rain. Whatever it is, you want to have that. But if you're so afraid, in my world sometimes they say stage fright. If you're so afraid that it keeps you from doing anything, breathe, baby, breathe. Breathe, baby, breathe. Go a little slow. Then you start to pick up some momentum. You might take a step back. It doesn't mean that you are going backwards like, oh, it didn't work. One step forward, 20 steps backwards. When I was putting together this retreat, I looked up the word retreat. And part of the definition of retreat, if you watch military projects and things, is, uh, and if you know the show Hamilton, attack, retreat. Attack, retreat. It sometimes mean, or it can also mean to g withdraw. And sometimes we do have to withdraw. Some of us may have had some real blows this year. And we in the fourth quarter going, oh, oh. You feel the weight of a defeat. That's real. That's so real. You want to withdraw. You need to heal the wounds, let the wounds heal. Part of that retreating is maybe readjusting the strategy. This didn't work. I tried this and I got pummeled. I tried this and I got attacked horribly. Let me go back and regroup, maybe try something different. 
So you might be in a season, family, of regrouping, re-strategizing, healing. Use this time, if you can't come to the winter retreat hosted by Kim Fields next month, <laughs> use this time to do your own retreating. New year coming. Attack! Go after that new year with all that you got, honey. Go after that, and that new energy. You guys get these wonderful cold temperatures here that can be really invigor. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to say that they can be invigorating and clear the mind. <laughs> I'm, a New York, I'm a New Yorker. I get it. I get it. But use this time to reflect and retreat and strategize and rework and heal and rest so that when you come out of this fourth quarter, you're ready to go. You're ready to go. Go. Go, 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 go. Our first port is Min Alana Banks. Let's give her a round of applause. anything so give me some grace um, my poem is called inevitability this dreadful regret weighs heavy on my chest a burden I lifted from you and my loved ones who knew that the world would seem so light after experiencing the tragedies of one's own memories if I had known would I change the way I act on this stage a stage of cracked glass that grows with each step a step in the right direction but on the wrong path a silent crowd with judgmental eyes. Who do I go to? Who do I trust? How do I stop feeling like I'm never enough? I know it's wrong and I should stop. Stop stepping on this glass, the wrong path. My future doesn't look bright, but in my, in my sight, I see the light. With darkness, they collide. Am I ready to ride, possibly die for this, fi for this, for what? Freedom? A false hope of happiness. I messed up. For this, <laughs> all right, <laughs> for this, <fear. laughs> okay. With darkness they collide. Am I ready to ride, possibly die, for this feeling, this delirium, a false hope of happiness? For what? Freedom? Freedom from this pain, this game which has no game. Am I ready to change and go through this pain? If only I had known, would I stay or would I go? The endless torture of my chamber degrades me. I hate me. I delay my secession in self-pity, looking at my shadow while I run towards my future. The clocks in the grass rush at me. They cut me. I have to be strong, make a bond, never fall. I'm tired, I'm hurt, as the onlookers just lurk. I'm in desperate need as I plead, stop this dream. All right. Our second port is Desire Williams. I am a black teen. I don't really know the theme of this poem, just that I want to follow my own dream. The teens that die try to make ends meet, but the government doesn't care about their defeat. I am a black teen. We grew up thinking our hair was nappy and dirty, but we didn't know the two needs. I mean, expensive hair care products cost more than a benzene. I am a black teen. We die walking down the street casually, not understanding the true meanings of thugs, gangs, or rivalries, but Understanding that cops are not good for our needs. We come off aggr violent and aggressive if we don't agree with certain things. Knee on the neck, even though he heard, I can't breathe. He was 46 years old, couldn't finish his goals, but those cops are murderers, open your eyes and see that there was no resistance in the air that he breathed. I mean, I am a black teen. We follow what we see, go on cycle after cycle, it doesn't complete. We all just want to succeed and finish our dreams but the system wasn't made to redeem those who didn't succeed. But when all is said and done, we are all still black kings and queens. So like I said before, I am a black teen.
Will Damien Bacola, if I'm mispronouncing, forgive me, please get ready to come up. Damien. Hello, guys. Hello. Uh, my name is Damien Bocola, but stage name is Roydan Brave. Uh, I want to sing a song uh, that uh, related to uh, the freedom of Africa. Thank you. Our next poet, get ready. Her name is Megan Huntsman. Hello, uh, my name is Megan Huntsman. Uh, my poem is called Anxiety. <laughs> okay. In the shadowed corners of my mind, anxiety, chains are intertwined. It wraps its arm a grip so tight, restricting my freedom day and night. It's a prison full of worry and fear, whispering doubts into my ear. Pacing heartbeats constricts my soul, its influence too heavy of a toll. Simple choices become a fight, anxiety distorts my inner life. Understanding and support I cannot find, I need the strength to break this bind. My freedom is far overdue, bruises inside aren't seen through. Oh, to soar in an open sky with these chains no longer tied. Cherish your freedom, that's your right. Live every moment with all your might. In the battle against anxiety's grip, you'll find power to regain your ship. Let's give it up for Megan. Miss Sophia Long, can you get ready to come up next, please? My name is Sophia Long, and my poem's name is Identity. Who am I? All the things I think I know about me, my looks, my likes, my personality, have been influenced by things on the outside, the real me over time I've tried to hide. And honestly, I'm not fully sure why. 
I try to think back to who I really am. All the things that I find that could be a clue are just more masks to the me I feel is true. I dig down further and find no indication of who I am, who I want to be. Will I remain without an identity for eternity? I want to be unique, not like anyone else, but I'm still trapped in the cell I forged for myself. My want to be liked is what's kept me in here, the key for escape so close and so near, but taking the key is the thing that I fear. This want for acceptance is like gravity pulling me in, popularity for my identity, but is this trade-off really a win? It could make me liked more, could store my popularity, but changing myself isn't making me happy. I've been living as a puppet by my fear I've been controlled, but it's time to cut down the strings and dictate my own story, no matter how difficult the start might be. And even though it may be hard and it might seem strange, it'll feel great to be freed from this captivity, a whole new world available for me. And finally for once, choose who I want to be, finally for once, feel like me. Thank you, Ms. Sophia. Can we have Layla Dennis get ready to come to the stage? The man him by, behind bars. Stuck between these bars and I'm only seeing stars. Can't wait to see my fam, but they can't see all my scars. I shouldn't have to tell my kids to act tough before they're told they aren't enough. I want them to see me as a star, but all they see is my skin, which is tar. Tar as in my gentle complexion, shining in the reflection, but no one wants to look in my direction because all they see is a broken heart that is unable to function. But as I woke, all I heard was these endless jokes that were never spoken. But hey, did I get my lucky token? I wish they knew within before, wait. I wish they knew what was within before they heard all my endless sins. Waiting for the next big justice, but who am I to say that they will trust us? But how long does it take for me to be a black man unable to get my justice or freedom? Can we get Malcolm ready to come up? Take your time, Malcolm. You got this. You got this. <laughs> All right. Well, look, my name is Malcolm, and my poem is called C. In the heart of Harlem, a leader arose. Malcolm X, a man of the world, world now knows. He spoke for oppressed, marginalized to his words, words were a fire, a powerful dispute. Malcolm X, a beacon of light, fighting for justice with all of his might. A voice for the voiceless, a symbol of save. Malcolm X, it's a lot we can say. Fought for our rights, talk and get faith. Get strength to the weak who couldn't handle the weight. My thoughts about freedom, I feel it every day. Freedom is nothing, I'll never let it away. Nor should you, you know that it's true. Freedom is whatever you make it, after all it's freedom. Eyes in the sky trying to reach higher. So in this world we can succeed and watch my admire. Tell me what you know about freedom. Hey, tell me what you know about that freedom. Tell me what you know about freedom. Let's give it up for Malcolm. Miss Olivia, get ready to come to the stage. My poem is called Freedom Thedom, and I promise, Thedom is a word, it means success and prosperity. I promise, I made sure of this before I wrote the title. <clears throat> In the vastness of the sky, a bird spreads its wings up so high. It soars, dances, and sings, its spirit free with no strings. And we, with our every breath, are gifted the same freedom, but less. We can fly, we can roam, but we can't truly explore and call the whole world our home. If you look like me, you are not truly free. Wings clipped by society, shackled by the chains of institutionalization. We get trapped by fear and doubt, a struggle to find our way out. Yet we still find hope, with it the strength that helps us cope. Thriving where we were purposely set back, yet we still knew how to get back. Influencing the masses as every day passes, with words that challenge or provoke, we surpass. Break the chains and limits that bind to awaken the spirits and uplift the mind. In the vast of the sky, 
Like a bird, we can fly high. We can soar, dance, and sing. We will be free with no strings.